Hello everyone and welcome back to CS Mentor. I hope you had a fantastic summer and that you are ready to start the semester. Today we are going to talk about a very important aspect of our academic life, which is presenting our work. So this happens in a multitude of potential opportunities, such as presenting papers at conferences, during a thesis defense, maybe in a class, or maybe for a job interview. However, I've seen many, many students, postdocs, and master students, PhD students, making several mistakes during their presentations in my career. And so today I want to discuss what are the five most common mistakes that I have encountered and how you can avoid them. So please watch the video until the end to see how you can improve your presentation skills. The first extremely common mistake that I've seen done from many, many students presenting papers is to read the slides. This is extremely boring it's very uninspiring for the audience and the main concept that you should realize is that if you are reading it then we can just read it ourselves and so you can just be quiet while we read it and then move to the next slide so this is definitely not how you should present furthermore if you're reading you're looking at the slides and you are not looking at the audience which make it even more disengaging so instead of this, what you should be doing is to use the slides to communicate concepts, to support the concepts that you actually want to communicate to the audience. So they should provide pictures, images, few important phrases to communicate what you want to deliver, but they should not contain everything that you want to say. And also you should guide the audience through your presentation. Like an image that I often use is to take the hand of the audience and bring them through your presentation, the concept that you want them to absorb and what you want them to remember about what you are presenting. The second common mistake that also makes a presentation boring and uninspiring and hard to follow is using too much text. So here the audience will not know what to do. So assuming you are not reading the slides, because this was the first mistake. But now in the second mistake, you put too much text. So what should the audience do? Should the audience read what you have put there or should the audience listen to you? So if the audience should read what is written there, then you should be quiet because if they're reading, they cannot listen to you. Otherwise, if they are uh, listening to you, then why there is the text there? Because nobody's going to read it. So there is really no much sense in putting an extensive amount of text inside your slides. So what you should be doing is to use a few meaningful bullet points that summarize what you are saying. So if someone wants to refresh or reinforce what you are trying to say, then they can read it on the slides and they will stick in their mind. And also this can be done through images, some meaningful images that communicate in a different way what you are conveying to the audience. So your job as the presenter is to deliver the content and the slides are just a support in order to facilitate the absorption and communication of this content. Another very common mistake that students do, and often they do it because they're so excited about communicating their research that they really want to deliver to the audience all the technical details of what they have discovered and what they have researched. But this often results in slides containing too much technical content and especially too much technical content compared to the length of the presentation. So there is no way that someone that watches, let's say a 30 minute presentation will be able to absorb several formulas inside this presentation. There is just no time to understand the nomenclature, to understand what that formula means and not just mathematically, but like intuitively, what is the contribution and role of that formula within the problem and solution that you are proposing. So what you should do is to, first of all, reduce the tankering content to a minimum that is just the minimum needed to explain the technical aspects of your work. If you do need to include some equations or some algorithms that are relatively complex to solve, you have two options here. So the first one is that if you really want to dig into the details, then you need to take your time. So, for example, if you have a slide which contains a complicated algorithm with several lines and procedures and loops, etc., then you should wait and explain in that slide each individual component of that algorithm. But this may 
result in maybe a slide taking five minutes of your presentation. And if you have 15 or 20 or 25, five minutes could be a very big chunk of the time that you have available. The other option is to show the formula, but then tell the audience, I'm not expecting you to understand all the details of this formula, but what you should do is to provide a high level overview of what that formula means. What is the role of that formula in what you are explaining so that the audience doesn't get overwhelmed by the complexity of the formula, but can still understand the intuition behind the use of that specific formula in your solution. The next very common mistake that I've seen students doing many, many times, especially at the beginning of their career where they're starting to present their work for the first times, is to try to put everything they have done in their slides and results in presentations which are extremely long and especially they have too many slides. So for example, I'm talking about if you have 30 minutes to present, maybe you come up with 50 slides. So this is impossible to present. It results in you talking super fast and then running out of time and overall making the presentation look very unprofessional, disorganized, bad time management, etc. So what you should do is to first of all size the number of slides for the length of time that you have available. So experience here will guide you, but just as a general golden rule, your number of slides should be less than half of the number of minutes that you have available. However, on average, that gives you enough time and enough room. Another important aspect to consider is often the audience may ask you questions and they may not wait until the end to ask you questions. And also, you know, questions tend to come often one after the other. So when someone breaks the ice and asks a question, then someone else will feel entitled to ask another question. So this creates these big gaps of time that you are not able to present. And then you need to start from the next slide. And a lot of time has already been uh, used. So the last mistake that I also have seen many times is to have a presentation with bad time management. So what I mean is that the content is not evenly organized and meaningfully organized throughout the presentation. So maybe you have a lot of slides to explain the motivation of your research, but then you have very few slides to explain what you're proposing. Or maybe you have the opposite, like very few slides on motivation and too many slides on the details or too many slides on the result and few on the technical content, etc. So it's important that the presentation is balanced. And here I want to propose you a very starting scheme, which honestly is the starting scheme that you should have in mind for many uh, different ways of communicating our contribution. This may look uh, familiar to those of you that have seen my previous videos because it's very similar to the structure of an abstract, very similar to the structure of an introduction. And of course, it's also very similar to the structure of a presentation. So what you should try to address in your presentation in state, what is the problem? Why this is important? What is the state of the art? What is the approach that you are proposing? And what are the results? What I want to stress here is that regardless of the length of your presentation, you should address all these points. So you may have an elevator pitch, just two minutes, and you want to make sure to address all of them. Of course, you need to be very brief, just one sentence each, but you should be able to do that. Maybe you may have a 30 minutes or even a 45 minutes presentation in which maybe you're doing a job interview and you will have way more time than a conference, for example. But even there, these are the points that you should address. Of course, in that case, you can extend it by talking, for example, about yourself, about your experience, about other research directions. But this is a very basic scheme that you should always have in mind when you are trying to present your work, basically in any form that we communicate our scientific discoveries. So I hope this video was useful and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.